Hello all you boys and girls, it's Michael again from MTG and more. We're off to part two with our uh, painting tutorial and um, well we do need uh, some basic things so let's start with uh, what we need. Of course we do need some water. In a later stadium we need some tacky glue again. Then of course we need some brushes. I use the large dry brush from Citadel. I think these are actually one of the best brushes you can get. And then we need the medium dry brush from, from Citadel. So those, of course you need the base. There it is, only this time it's base coated black. Like I said in the last video. So let's put it there. And for the paint you need, uh, you need a uh, bone white I, at least I use them. You need a bone white. You need the leather brown. You need the earth color. Then for the stone you need the cold gray. And if it doesn't drop out of my fingers, you need the stone wall gray. That's about it guys. So let's start by uh, starting to use the earth in our palette. Yes, I don't clean my palettes. I think it's something cool and something nice which you do. So there it goes. Just a small amount, not really much. And see how far we can get with that. So we take a large dry brush. Just a little dab like this. And then you work it into the, uh, the bristles. After that, you dry brush it off. That's why it's called dry brushing. You take the uh, um, the base. Yeah, let's call it. It's it's called the base. And then you start brushing everywhere where there is no stone. So this is the easy part. And when you're done again, dip it in. Work it in. And do some dry brushing magic. Cool thing about dry brushing is that it doesn't need any specific skill. You just slam, as you can see, you just slam that brush into the, well, is it canvas? <laughs> you just slam it into the, uh, what is it, the base, yeah. So when you're done again, take some more. Do some flamming again. Continue this until you're happy with the uh, with the color. And the actual black is just a tint of what it was before you did it. The dry brushing. So continue on to this, and well, there you go. Let me let me show you some light. Continue working on it till everything is uh, to your liking. And when we're done with the um, with the next one, or beginning with the next one, I'll get back to you guys. See you soon. And after you're done with the um, with the earth color, let's go over to leather brown. There's some guys on the internet giving you advice just to thin your paint. Well, I'm what well, I should do, but I don't. I think it takes just a little bit more time and what you get in return is a little bit more feeling for the, uh, the miniature you're painting. And if you're doing it correct, then you can create just equal as, as, as nice stuff. So this is about the, uh, for dry brushing, this is about the amount of paint you should have on your brush. And then with the leather brown, make it a little bit more, well, we, we call it shouting, we, shouting colors in the Netherlands. Um, actually what it is, you, you, you just make the colors a little bit more bright when you just take a, um, a lighter tint than the one before. Once again, don't feel ashamed to uh, touch the, um, the stones because sand tends to go everywhere. So my camera died on me and I had to finish the um, uh, what color did we use? Uh, let me see. The um, leather brown. That part we uh, we needed to skip. 
and I needed to clean my brushes because the uh, phone needed to cool down. So what I wanted to say when uh, I started uh, noticing that my camera died on me is that sometimes you can see the uh, little parts of course I don't see them now oh there you go the little parts like this the white parts tend to break off and that is the kitty litter uh, which just stops uh, being glued tight you can put some nice um, uh, what do you call it grass grass on it and then it should be hidden from view so on to the next color we are going to use bone white bone white for the um, next color give it a good shake there you go squeeze a little dab on and now we're going to use a small brush and the reason we're going to use a small brush is that we don't need so much and we just need some for the walk paths. Like here. That'll brighten up their day. If you do it like this, then the, uh, the heightened accent is just a little bit more than the rest of the base. And it gives it a nice tint to the grass you're going to pour on in a couple of minutes. You can see there is a path right there. There is some path right there. That's what you can create with just a bit of white. Just a small amount. Oh, see? There goes another one. You can put some grass there. With just a tiny amount of white. And the cool thing is you, you shouldn't take you shouldn't take a lot because it accentuates everything just in a couple of minutes so this is it for the white just like that now off to the bigger parts i am going immediately with what is it cold gray which is a perfect one for stones if you highlight that within a uh, stonewall gray that is really awesome to see you need quite a lot of it but not just too much that you lose the texture of the stone so here we go this is also always an exciting part to see how it works out there you go and now the stone comes to life. See how the sand mixes in with the uh, with the dirt? That's pretty cool. And here as well, like I said, there are some dirty stones around there. there don't use too much because it can ruin your texture like I said before the amount like that should be more than enough can you see it okay amount like that yeah like this here so work that in a bit Show some love to the stones. Once again, don't use too much. I'm using now because it can ruin your stony day. On the other hand, all stones aren't the same. So if you feel like using a lot, it's your stones. Sorry for the last good lighting. I noticed that my battery or my phone is getting a lot of overheating issues when you uh, put the, um, the internal light on as well. So I need to adjust the lighting a bit. 
really can't do anything about that at the moment. So we'll just need to do with it as we can right now. Smack on a good amount. Don't worry if it looks a bit too bland. We'll take care of that in a couple of minutes. See, it's starting to become something, see? Pretty awesome. Now I know the other stones are pretty light on my other uh, bases. And yes, every stone is different. But I do like them a little bit lighter. Perhaps I'll just take the bigger one. The bigger brush for... Uh... I'm afraid this is becoming one of the worst filmed videos I ever made. Because my camera keeps on overheating. So I just put the light back on and see how far we can go. Now I'm going to push a little bit harder and farther and faster. The delivery is... Yeah, the, the lighting is actually pretty good right now. So that's about for the stones. As you can see, the base is getting pretty alive right now. And it only needs some more... Uh, what do you call it? Grass. <laughs> I keep on forgetting that. And putting on grass is, of course, pretty easy, so let's do that right now and see what the results will be. And if it would be easy, my camera shut down on me again, so uh, I'm just going to show you the final result and get it over with. So this is the final result, and this is the final result of the other one. I wanted to make this one a little bit more grassy, just because uh, the archers uh, will be on it. The goblin sharp sticks, I believe they are called, and this is the base as it has been come. I th still think it's pretty awesome. And this is the small base for my Morax orcs. So if you like these videos, if you like these tutorials, uh, let me know and thank me by hitting that subscribe button as hard as you can. Thanks for watching. May the dice be forever in your favor, and see you next time. Bye-bye.